Yeah, this is actually pretty cool. I've been working with Ember for like two years. So um, I guess I'm kind of like a uh, very senior in this. Um, so I've been, I've been using it since well before uh, 1.0. Um, so it's pretty exciting to kind of just see it grow. And I'm pretty excited to get to talk about um, the newest project I'm working on. Uh, so yeah, so I want to talk today about building Ember context-aware real-time components, which is quite a mouthful. Um, when I was trying to decide at like kind of how to go around um, discussing this thing, um, it kind of stemmed from where our project was a year ago uh, to where it is now, and so these pieces kind of came into being just out of necessity. Uh, so a little background first. Uh, Washio is an on-demand laundry and dry cleaning company. Um, so I'm CTO. Um, we're in Los Angeles, or we're Los Angeles based, um, but we're currently in San Francisco, LA, and DC. Um, so our system has um, about 100 drivers on the road on any given day. So there's a lot of logistical and operational needs um, for the system. So one being that we have drivers, so we're getting statuses of orders and things like that coming from drivers, um, but also then just the logistics of uh, running our distribution centers and working with our cleaning vendors. Uh, so the first thing we have is, and this, I just want to kind of give a prelim of about what we're doing. So the iOS and Android customer apps, um, communicate with our driver apps. So our drivers are able to go on the road and update statuses of orders and um, add images and add notes. And then our cleaners are also able to add images for items and then do things like um, report discrepancies or rejections or delays. Um, and then this is just kind of a cool picture of our supply chain. Um, management. So this is our distribution center in San Francisco. This is actually our old distribution center. Um, but you can kind of see it just moving in and out. So the crux of our system is our back end, which is um, built on Node and Ember. Um, and we're using CoffeeScript. Uh, but most of the core of it is an Ember app. So and actually our client app um, as well for web is Ember, and our first incarnation of the iOS and Android apps were um, web-wrapped uh, Ember apps, uh, which was kind of cool and kind of not cool. Um, <laughs> but we're native now, so it's a much better world. Um, so the first need with our system was um, a dashboard within a dashboard. So we built the system, and we had all these orders and you could you know, change statuses of orders and you could view who the pickup driver is and drop off driver is. Um, but what would happen is you know, you'd be on the orders page and then you click on it, go to a new page. And even though it's Ember, it was still like a slow time consuming thing. So what started materializing is kind of a sidebar that was basically a widget that was context aware. So if you clicked on a different order, you would see that order. Um, and then the widget actually would then control sub widgets. So it will have, um, well, I'll kind of show you in a second what that means. Um, and then, yeah, it can be expanded to add new needs. So if we take a look at what it is. This is pretty small. OK. Um, so on the left side, we have, here's like a live shift. So this is our staging server. Um, so we have an order, and then we can actually see the order here. Uh, so this is kind of the widget that I'm talking about in Ember um, that has the current order. And then within it, there's the times of pickup and times of drop off, and then preferences, notes, cleaner issues, images, um, the status history. And so these are all sub widgets. And it kind of, um, so this, I started building this kind of before I um, learned about, uh, 
let's see, about uh, Ember components. So this is sort of an Ember component, um, but not exactly. So the only thing I'm doing really is I'm doing a render widget. And then the, the difference with components uh, in Ember is that you're not really using a route. So normally you have a route that sets up your model and in your controller and you know, you're on your way and you're seeing your page. This is a little different because you have your route here and you have your view of your, like maybe 100 orders. And when you're clicking on any of them, you're really just setting a component over here. And then that component is in charge of setting all its subcomponents. So if we go back here, we can see the current order and then also the current customer. So this, these five areas are kind of separate widgets in and of themselves. So when you go to a current order, it will actually get loaded into the orders list as well, um, which then this will carry over um, if the page is refreshed. So it's a way for them to get back to an order that they were on. And so a little bit of code on this. Um, so this is at the actual um, sidebar widget. So you can see the scrub brush and then recent and search and live events. And let's see. So what's nice is that like, for instance, the notes, we have these different um, tabs that you can have that actually are tied to a subcontroller. Uh, so here you have like issues and this will actually show the count of the issues talking to that. Um, and then inside of, I believe this is, yeah, so this is the main like widget controller which has kind of grown into like a fairly massive thing. Um, but it's not too bad. It, so you can have like a set order, right? So when a um, order on the left side, there might be 100 orders. When you click on any one of those, it's just going to pass that order object to the set order, which will display the order. And then what it will do it is it will call all these sub widgets. Um, so you could see like the operation widget order status history. This will actually do a get then to our API and get the status history and display it, which is kind of nice because some of these could take long. So on the customer page, for example, our API is pretty slow in the summarization of these orders. Uh, so this, the first incarnation of this, everything was loading in that one component and this would take you know 10 seconds when really we had the order object ready. So that's kind of helped. Um, as far as, as far as like making it responsive for our ops associates, because um, one of the main things when you're dealing in a very customer-centric space is that people are calling on the phone yelling at you. And so like the faster that they can at least get the order up to help them, the better. Um, and you kind of, as we were growing, we were, you know, all the ops team was in with the engineers, which makes it pretty interesting because you're actually hearing people complain about your product in real time um, or people yelling at them and then them yelling at you. Yeah. Uh, it would not be that hard. There's in the this is using a slightly older version of Ember, and in the newer versions, they do have um, a more sophisticated URL routing, um, and it just that is actually pretty high on our list um, to make not only the page that you're on, but then the page you're on plus what search results you're doing on there, and then also what is currently displaying on the sidebar. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah it's very high on my list, <laughs> but it's not done yet. Um, so the second need of the system is um, making it real time. So we're, when we're running the system, we're dealing with um, drivers on the road updating statuses. So an order will move you know, from picked up to or from placed to an hour before, to 10 minutes before, to picked up, and kind of move through that whole chain. Um, and so ops associates are monitoring this. So if an order 
is from between 5 and 6, or 5 and 5.30, and it hasn't changed status to 10 minutes before, and it's like 5.25, a ops associate can kind of reach out to a driver by um, texting them and kind of figure out what's going on. So there's kind of been this need of how do we get, um, how do you know, you make sure you're delivering everything in a half hour time window. Um, so it's for, and it's, it's also used then for tracking drivers so we can see drivers on the map and things like that. Um, so what we're using for that is Firebase, um, which is basically a kind of Redis system that also allows for pub sub. So you can subscribe to a particular collection of data and then anytime that data is updated or it's a new item is added, then you'll get a notification for it. Um, so over on the right side, you can see like drop the cleaners. I'm gonna kind of get into how this changes, but we'll be able to change things in real time and actually see them in the system. Okay, so the first example, and so I'll just uh, pull up the driver app on my phone, um, and then if I change it to 10 minutes before pickup, you'll actually see it change here and here, um, and then like a text message gets sent out to the customer uh, saying that we're 10 minutes before pickup. Um, the same thing then also is, you can see the green circle around Ice Cube, so that means he's checked in, so if he, does, if he checks out, then he'll be checked out and go white and then back to green. Um, so you can kind of see that that's been really helpful because um, you know, Ops Associates will have you know, maybe 50 orders or something in the five o'clock slot and as they move along, so if we move this to order picked up, you can kind of see that now this goes into gray, meaning that that order is done for the day. So they'll see a list and those will, you can kind of tell it's gray, yeah. So they can kind of like visually see that these eight orders are done and these two they have to like kind of keep tabs on. So let's see. Okay, so the Firebase setup, um, so yeah, like I said, we have a node server running. Um, so there's a Firebase service that I built that um, basically handles sending all requests to Firebase. Uh, and these will be called from different places. So these will be called anytime an order status is updated, anytime an order is created. Uh, and these are just simple AJAX post calls. Um, and then driver location. So when we're sending out driver locations. So currently driver location is the phone is um, just sending a post to our uh, API. I'm working on, there's, um, there's something in Firebase called GeoFire. So we're kind of working through building out that aspect of it where this will actually just talk directly to Firebase, um, which has like good and bad qualities. But one of the nice f features of GeoFire is that Pretty soon what we'll be doing is when your driver is in some geofence location around your house, it will actually switch to you seeing them on a map coming like kind of Uber style. Um, and then yeah, it's so Firebase is just storing a JSON object. On the uh, client side, we have a Firebase service that's kind of separate from the Ember app. Um, but it's basically just receiving new messages and then throwing them into an array inside the app. Um, and then different controllers can choose to listen to those new Firebase messages. So when I was showing the um, previous piece here, both this controller of the live shift and then the controller of the current order are both listening for new messages. Uh, this is gonna be refactored a little further and uh, I've actually been talking with Firebase about kind of good practices with, um, with how we're gonna like structure our data. But you can kind of see what it looks like right now. Um, so this is Firebase and we have a live event. So this live event just came in and I should be able to 
get a new one to pop in here. And so yeah, you can see that highlight when it uh, changes status. So a new event comes in, and you can see here's like the actual object that comes in. And then then on, let's see. OK. So yeah, so on the, no, on the server side, here's basically our Firebase service that will um, actually connect to Firebase and then push data to Firebase. Um, so we have the ability to turn it on and off using Socket.io. Um, or our setting for Socket.io. So like, I've done a lot of chat servers and different things with Socket.io, and it's really not as simple as <laughs> just to start it up and have it going and it be consistently not hanging up your web server and consistently getting messages through. Um, I'm sure some of you can do it really expertly, but uh, Firebase kind of takes a lot of that out of the equation. Uh, so basically, this is just pushing a message to Firebase. Um, and then on the client side, we have this little service, which right now is just tying to live events. And anytime a new item is added to a live events, it throws it into, a, uh, into an array right here um, in, inside of the actual uh, Ember application. Uh, and then what will happen is our order controller will simply bind to maybe yeah it will so it will simply bind to the app.socket messages um, and anytime a new message comes in it's just grabbing it off the stack and then handling it. So if this, for an order, all we really care about is if the status changed. So if the status changed and it's the current order, then we're going to update the status. And that's where you see the status change. Um, it's going to get some refactoring. So there's actually, on Firebase's documents, there's a really good um, discussion about like properly structuring their database. Um, so the way that I'm doing it right now is not necessarily ideal. Um, what I'm going to do going forward is th this actual controller will bind to the Firebase order object. And then if that ever changes, it will just get the message for this one. So this will scale a little poorly as far as this controller is receiving every message out there in the system for every order and then doing this check. Um, but this is V1. Okay, the third need that we kind of kept seeing with this application was it being um, very necessary to have really strong customer service. Um, it just so happens that we're at Zendesk. This is not a plug for Zendesk. But uh, we are using Zendesk, um, which has been amazing. So one thing is just it's a really amazing product in general. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with these things. But as far as it, it, it works really well. And everybody's really happy with it. But the second aspect of it is that it's what I consider the top echelon of um, Ember apps. So a lot of the cues for our app I do take from Ember and how Ember is doing things. Uh, so like one feature that we really want to get in there, so they have a really good um, query string system going on in there for, for all their data. The other thing they have is the tab system, which is really amazing. Um, and then the aspect that was really helpful for us is this two-way communication between our system and their system. So we have you know, our scrub brush, which has our user and all the order information, and then the current order and things like that. Uh, but our ops associates aren't always in there. They're in our system, but they're also in Zendesk a lot, because a new email comes in, they get a new ticket assigned to them, and they're going into a ticket. So 
Um, okay, so I think I'll sh I'll ex I'll show it a little bit before I explain that part. Um, but okay, so basically here we have a ticket. So this is a ticket that I created, and over here you can see our system has loaded up. So if we refresh this page, it will take a little bit of time, but that's all right. So this is then, this is a, ti a mini Ember app, um, and actually the MailChimp one is as well. But this is a little Ember app that um, we created that just calls our API and gets all the information about the user. So you open something in here, and it's context sensitive, and you now have access to the user and to all their orders. So somebody calls, and you can grab their order, and these are actually in the, it's in random uh, order, which is not great. Um, so you can actually then go directly to our system and view the customer, um, which is really helpful. And then we can go back to Zendesk as well. So we can go into here and see all the Zendesk tickets and go back to them. So if you are in a uh, very customer service heavy um, organization, this kind of thing is really beneficial. So how is it all set up? So on the node side, uh, just using uh, the node Zendesk NPM, which basically lets you retrieve data from Zendesk for a particular user. Um, and then there's just a Zendesk route and a Zendesk controller on the API side that lets us get data back to uh, the Ember component. And then there's uh, a user route that we're able to query um, for both the scrub rush and for Zendesk to get user information. And then on the Ember side, there's another one of these widgets that will actually load the Zendesk tickets. Um, and on the Zendesk app side, there's kind of a mini Ember app um, that actually does the lookup to our API as well. So let's see. Yep, so the Zendesk controller is just um, called through the uh, user, this current user, current customer, which will then just call Zendesk and have it look up the user and do a simple get of that. And then this will actually do the search on Zendesk. And let's see. And so that, that's basically just returning the data back. And then on the Zendesk side, let's see. Okay, so. I haven't looked at this for a little bit, so I might be a little rusty on it. But um, there's basically this um, app.js file that will actually do the get and then um, return the data back and actually just render it. So it's a really straightforward, or the, the setup is kind of funky um, as far as like learning how they're doing their Ember type of. Um, layout, but there's this like request user info um, piece, and this is kind of where it is a little funky. So there's um, a couple different pieces of Zendesk. So there's like a ticket sidebar and there's a user sidebar, and you can kind of see where you have to actually query the current um, page to get the user that you're looking up. Um, and then the template basically is just showing the user and you can then link to the user's information on our system and then you know the summarization of all their orders right there. Um, and within Zendesk, it's pretty cool that you can um, basically just, cr oh, I have this one open. You can actually just go in here 
And they actually have a ton of different, so there was this, there was that one, um, the MailChimp one, um, but there's a whole marketplace of these apps. So it's kind of cool to see because there's um, just a lot of people, I guess, building Ember apps for Zendesk. And so you can basically bring in your own private app um, and then connect to other ones. So there's ones like that might give you like more information about a user or um, for MailChimp, we can actually see all of our user history of email sent out to them and things like that. And let's see, I think. Yeah, that's kind of it. Um, yeah, so if you want to email me for anything, feel free. Um, that's it. Any questions? Yeah, we're, so, yeah, that's like the main reason why. Um, we're going to kind of continue expanding it. So one of the things that we're building out is a chat system so that we'll be able to have customers talk to ninjas and ops associates and all that kind of thing. Um, and so Firebase was kind of spawned off building chat and it works really well for that. Um, but the other aspect is we're gonna start using it for um, a few other things. Like right now when you look at, say, the live shift view in our system for Los Angeles for today, we're you know, hitting our server and querying our data and bringing it back. Um, and so I'm kind of looking into ways to kind of have that in, um, in Firebase so that we can just have that page connect directly to that collection and see the orders for that day. So it's kind of like a way to like redundantly store your data. Um, I mean, we're also using Redis on our server, but there's kind of, uh, it's like the delicate balance of how much you're using this, like kind of just a different way to store the data um, versus how much you're using just your traditional API to serve up the data. By the way, very cool uh, loading indicator. Oh, <laughs> I hate the thing. I mean, that's like our loading indicator of death. Because <laughs> if any error happens, then the that just, yeah, the washing machine. Yeah. So after seeing it like 10,000 times, you'd get sick of it. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, well, so we're actually not using Ember data right now. Um, so it has kind of been because of that. Um, but we're also, so Ember Fire, but then there's also like GeoFire, which they've just built, which um, that one kind of interests me a lot because um, they have a pretty cool demo of like just being able to move within a geofence to see, their demo is all buses across the entire country and you move the circle anywhere and you'll see the actual live buses moving around. Um, and so that like works really well with what we're doing. Um, the, the app, yeah, kind of started before, I've just had some issues with Ember Data and have decided not to use it. And so unfortunately, Ember Fire kind of gets thrown out with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, they have kind of, they're building pretty cool like offshoots in Firebase for these kinds of things. So I think GeoFire is gonna be the next thing that we implement from them. Cool.